Hello guys, this is Code and Code, and this is 21st lecture of this number theory series. And in this lecture, we are going to continue uh, what we have started in 20th lecture, that is uh, GCD sum. How we can calculate GCD sum using Euler Station function. So the problem that we started looking at in the previous lecture, that is lecture 20, was that this. So we have to calculate answer which is actually GCD sum of each number from 1 to n with n. So of course using a simple while loop, sorry, we, some, uh, simple for loop we can calculate this in n log n time. But we wanted to improvise the time complexity. So this is what we reached onto the conclusion without any proof that instead of running a loop from 1 to n what we can do we can run a loop for only the divisors of n because the gcd of any number with n is going to be one of the divisors of n so it is not a good idea to run, run a loop from 1 to n but it would be better if we only uh, see for each divisor how many numbers would be there with that gcd for example uh, 4 is the divisor of 12 and we would see how many numbers are there from 1 to 12 so that the GCD with 12 is equals to 4 and we see there are two numbers so instead of running a loop what we can do we can directly count this number and multiply with 4 and this would be their contribution into the total sum this way we can calculate the overall sum in square root of n time instead of n log n time if we can calculate these numbers that is how many numbers are there with gcd 6 with 12 and so on if we can calculate these numbers uh, in constant time so first of all why this is true let's see that and how phi is, is going to help us because we do not know how to calculate these numbers yet so the question was how many integers are there from 1 to n with having gcd d with n and remember d is divisor of n let's suppose there are m different integers from 1 to n so that the gcd with n is d so one of the observation about these m integers is that since gcd of any xi with n i will range from 1 to m gcd of any xi with n is equals to d right then gcd of xi divided by d comma n divided by d would be 1 again uh, if gcd of xi and n is equals to d then gcd of xi divided by n or uh, xi divided by d and n divided by d would be equal to 1 this is an important observation so the question was uh, let's say n is equals to 20 and d is equals to 2 so uh, the numbers which are having GCD 2 with 20 are these number 2, 6, 14 and 18. So the observation was since 18 and 20 are having GCD 2 then 18 by 2 and 20 by 2 should have GCD 1 right and that is actually true but why let's look at the prime factorization to understand this. Now prime factorization of 20 is 2 into 2 into 5 while prime factorization of 18 is 2 into 3 into 3 if you see the gcd was 2 which means in prime factorization of these two number this thing is common to both of them right we see yes 2 is common that is how you get your gcd you take the prime factorization of first number prime factorization of second number just uh, mark all the numbers which are uh, common to both and then their product is equals to their gcd now if gcd is uh, this number and you are dividing both of the number by that gcd then what you are doing actually you are re uh, removing all of the number which were common to both of the numbers which means after dividing there is nothing left common between the two numbers if in the prime factorization of two numbers there is nothing left common that means their gct is one that means they are co-prime with each other and that is what this observation says if the GCD of two numbers is some number x, then if you divide both number by that number x and again find their GCD, then the GCD will come out to be 1 because they are now co-prime because all of the common factors you have removed by dividing them with their GCD. And that is why they will be co-prime now. Now how this observation is going to help us in the problem that we just started? Well, so the original problem was this 
and we reached on to conclusion of this there are m numbers uh, f1 to xm which are from 1 to n and their gcd with n is equals to d but how to find m that is the count of numbers which are having gcd d with n well one more important observation observation about xi's is that since all of the xi's are less than equals to n hence xi by d would be less than equals to n by d not a uh, not a uh, not a really uh, important observation it looks but this is important so what we are getting here all of these number which are having gcd d with n are actually co prime with n by d so instead of counting this that how many integers are there which are having gcd g uh, d with n what we can do we can count how many numbers are there which are co prime with n by d and which are less than equals to n by d both would be same because all of these number which are having d uh, which are which are having gcd d with n are also the number which are co prime with n by d so instead of counting these instead of counting this i can count this and counting this a bit difficult but this is really easy so all you have to do count how many integers are there from 1 to n by d which are co prime with n by d this is actually phi of n by d so what we can do for each number to count how many integers are there with gcd 4 with n what we can do we can directly find phi of 12 by 4 and that would be the answer and phi of 12 by 4 which is 3 is equals to 2 and that is how you get these number one important observation all about these all all these numbers is that sum of these numbers 4 2 2 2 1 and 1 must be equal to sum of all, all integer from 1 to n that is n this is also one of the important property of Euler's Torsion function is that for n integer for any integer n summation of phi of n by d where d is divisor of n is equals to n we'll look at that later but now we know how to find these number which are not marked dark black, uh, dark black. so to find number of integers which, which are having gcd 4 with 12 simply find phi of 12 by 4 so now that we know that how to calculate these gray colored numbers now we can ca ca uh, complete our function that we have left in the previous lecture so this we have completed in the previous lecture and now the get count function was to return how many integers are there from 1 to n so that the gct with n is equals to d so of course we would return phi of n by d this capital n by d so the question is how uh, calculating phi of an integer say some integer m takes the square root of m time that we have already seen instead of doing that in each query instead of calculating phi again and again what you can do you can create an integer function or sorry integer array phi with n as large as 10 plus 6 uh, if there are q queries about illustration function that it is hardly uh, hardly uh, it is not possible that n would be more than 10 to the power 6 or 7 if it is then you are not required to use um, uh, what we call it sieve algorithm if not then most likely if n is less than equals to 10 to the power 6 you can use sieve algorithm to calculate 5 from 1 to 10 to the power 6 in n log n time where n is 1 million or 10 to the power 6 after that you can directly return in each query uh, phi of n by d can be returned in constant time so pre-processing time would take n log n where n is 10 to the power 6 and then uh, for each query you can return phi of n integer from 1 to 10 to the power 6 in constant time so the overall complexity would be n log n plus q into square root of n n log n time for pre-processing and preparing this uh, phi array using sieve algorithm that i have already uh, that we have already discussed before and this for to answer each query because each query now can be answered in square root of n time so the overall complexity would be this 
so this was how you would calculate all uh, gcd sum using all illustration function in square root of n time for each query so this was all for this lecture thank you guys for watching until the next video drops keep coding thank you